we're gonna go ahead and install some overdue, what would you call this, Lewis, suspension or chassis? Chassis, right? Some chassis parts for the FL5. They've been sitting up here in the garage for a little while, but what better time to get these installed than the week before a track day? <laughs> and the parts that we're gonna get installed are gonna be the Spoon Sport Rigid Collar Set for the FL5. These are the rear, as you can see here. These are gonna be the front. And we've done rigid collars before, and now we're gonna go ahead and do it for the FL5. As you see here, these are the instructions. If you've ever done these, they're pretty much the same as the FK8. Uh, don't fret about it saying FL1 over here. These are for the Type R. Don't trip. We know what we're doing here, guys. Again, it says right there, Type R, and it says Type R up here. We didn't get some boo-boo just to put it on the car. Now sit back and enjoy this little ride we're gonna do. Shouldn't take too long for the guys here at VCD to get us all plugged up. We are in the process of removing the 16 million clips that are holding this under tray to the car. Once we get all that done, we are gonna go ahead and show you where all of the rigid collar points are. Like I said, this is pretty much like an FK8 type setup. Lewis is quite versed in it. They've done quite a few hundred of these things over here at the shop. Take a look upstairs. You see the S3 suspension we put in in that prior video. It looks really good. Can't wait to take it over to shoe work and have them do a little work to it. And I don't know guys, this might be one of the first and few times you see the underside of the FL5. Look at the bottom of the FL5. Now, Lewis is gonna go ahead and give us a couple of little things that are different from the FK8. We noticed quite a few differences that the FK8 does not have. And like I said, I'll just have Lewis kind of give you a quick one, two, three. What we noticed is a Honda did a lot more aluminum on the actual subframe. So this, all these upper part is all aluminum now. And then to reinforce it, they still use like the steel, but they've completely basically filled in all this excess like the FK8 had. The FK8, you were able to use those X braces. And this one, we try to do the stiff plate, but it's completely different. This whole area here is completely filled in now, so it's now a lot more rigid. And the motor mount's slightly different, so the FK8 one doesn't work. The front pipe is different because it's it's a longer car, so this changes. But motor motor wise, everything's basically the same. These uh, lower control arms are longer, and uh, basically like all of these lower end links are longer. The upper end links are longer. Uh, basically, because the car's wider, everything needs to be longer. And this subframe is obviously it's, it's wider too because the, the car is wider as well. But besides that, I mean, you have a lot more support down here. And with these new collar kits, we should have a definitely even more, more rigidity in the, in the actual turn radius when we're, you know, we're doing hard corners or we take this car to the canyons. But definitely... They did this too, huh? Yeah, the FK had that, yeah. More oh. Like a flat bottom type thing, you know? Yeah, but the FK, I think it was more plastic, wasn't it? Wasn't yeah, this plastic? plastic? This is this, whatever the heck this is supposed to be? Some type of like felt or something, yeah. I don't know. Oh, the other sick thing is that they have like these new, they added basically the, the tow hooks to both sides now. So when we take these cars to the dyno, super easy for the dyno to like literally just strap the car up and have no issues with the car basically moving around or anything like that. We're gonna use this transmission jack to give us a little bit more safety while we have the car on the jack. We're not gonna push up against the car. We're just going to support it against the subframe. And this is just basically gonna like let us loosen all the bolts at once. And then we'll just lower everything, install all of the sleeves, and then put everything all back up at the same time instead of doing it how you would do it on the ground, which would be loosen each one little by little, each side, and then basically the subframe would kind of go down a little bit. And then you will have enough room to pry one side, put one in, and then you have to tighten that. So it's a, the other way is a process. Because we do have a lift, because we do have a transmission jack, we're gonna do it the professional way, how I would have done it if you somebody just brings in their FL5 to the shop. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is basically remove all the main 17s, which are the, the main support ones. Basically, the main ones are the four big ones in the corner. So that's one here, one over there, basically. 
And then another one here, and then another one there. And I'm not gonna take them out. Now you're gonna loosen them first, and then we'll loosen all the rest of them that's holding everything together. And then that one's good. Basically, we can use a gun after. As long as you guys loosen them first, we should be pretty good to use power tools. So you don't want to use a power tool. Right away, just because you, you can do a lot of shock on the, on the threads. So now we're going to loosen those. Don't hit yourselves against anything. Okay, cool. That one's loose. Let's move over to the other side. Do this back one now. And this main one actually, this is like a arm and the arm will tilt after we loosen it completely. Like I said, guys, if you guys are skipping around in the video, the only reason we're doing it this way is because we have the correct tools to do it this way. You can definitely just loosen one side each one by one, basically how this would be. Once you loosen the front, the whole frame would start to shift with it. Now, the next one we're gonna need is we're gonna need an extension to get all the way into this bolt that's all the way in here. This guy. Which is that guy right there. And I'm assuming that's why they make these holes, right? Yeah, it's for this type of job that we're doing. We have to remove the subframe, do transmission work, stuff like that. Some people remove the motors from the bottom, so. Oh, and then one thing, once you do this, 100%, the alignment will be a lot more true for sure. But you're gonna need an alignment. Yeah, you're gonna need an alignment for sure. But when you do the alignment, you're gonna have a very true alignment. So which means is that you're not gonna have no play in the frame. So basically your alignment's gonna be as pure as possible. So it's gonna be this one right here. This and that one now. Yeah, they do. They do have washers on them. And I'm assuming that's why they don't do like the lower one anymore. Because remember they on the FK it has like a low one. So that one's good. And then I will do the next one now, which is this front one right here. There you go. All the way, Let's take them all up. Cool, I'll, I'll take those. Do we keep them in line? No, I, I know where they go. <laughs> no, I meant like, do you stay with the same one? No, no, they're, they're, they're identical. They're identical. I'm telling you. See, me being the OCD guy, I'd be like, that's the, the driver's side one front. This is that. The passenger, they're, they're identical. I know you there. type R nerds are do, saying the same thing, you know, right? <laughs> no, nothing different about them. They're all the same length. They're all the same washer. And if you're doing it this method, or someone at a shop that has access to like a lift and a transmission jack, basically just remove all the bolts. If you guys are doing this at home, do not remove the bolts. You guys need to leave the bolts and lower it very slowly. Follow the instructions on the paper. We remove this one now. Now we're gonna remove this one by hand. Everything should be pretty loose after you guys broke them. And basically this is like how they look like. These are the main bolts that hold the subframe up at each corner. These are the upper ones. You can tell they're, these two are different sizes. And then this is for your control arm. And this one's a completely different size. This is a little stubby one. Putting the collars on. And the collars are actually going to go inside of here. Inside this little divot where this opening is. If you can see in here, the frame doesn't actually fill in the whole gap of where the screw would go. Even here, if you can see inside, there's like there's like a bevel in here, and then the, the threads become all the way inside here. You can see how far my finger goes in before I can touch the end. And now we're also gonna do the same thing. If you see here, this hole is very massive compared to where the bolt goes in. So this is how much, much extra material you have here. So now, just to show you. Yeah, just to show you guys. And we've done this in other videos. videos. Yeah. If you look back on the channel, see so that? All that play is what basically lets the suffering shift while you're doing ex uh, hardcore turns, you know, on track and stuff like that. So the front need F1, F1. And if you go here, F1 has a small divot here in the upper top. So F1 is gonna be these two. And then you are gonna need to grease all of them. I can show you. That is this guy here with the F1. Yep, that is like F1 to me. And this is a flat base. And then, so before we put the lube on, so Albert's gonna put lube at the rim of all this on both ends, as well as this. So the on bo both sides. On both sides. So now I'm gonna show you guys in the subframe what this is gonna do. So this is the lower one, right? You see like the big bevel? And now this is the hole for the subframe. And then now that goes in there and see how much more. Let me see. So now you can see the bolt go in. 
And then once that's in, there is no play on the subframe, which is what we want. Let me put this back. I'll let Albert put some grease on all these, and then we'll be right back with you. Yeah. That's gonna go in here. Okay. So you're gonna put that into the, that's gonna go inwards. Like the, the big pieces gonna go inwards. So I'll hold this down for you. You put that in there. Where's it going? Inside the hole for here, so right here. See? Yeah, I see it. Yeah, you're getting like that. Huh? Dude, that flashlight is bright, dude. Anti seize cream they provide. <laughs> they have cream. So this one's F4, and this is gonna be the ones that are on this uh, right hand side. And then these are gonna be the 17s and 19s. It's funny, like this stuff is the same stuff when you buy the lug nuts. Thing. Yeah, it's the exact same stuff. Huh? Well, crazy thing is you would think that this is like a super thick metal and it's really not. It's okay, very soft so and malleable. Like this, right? Yeah. And that's the point of it being soft and malleable. Yeah, sorry guys for all the shuttering you guys are gonna see. It's just like our, the light that we're using is just super, super bright. But basically that's where it goes inside there. That's gonna go in the top of the aluminum. And I would do the other side now. And just to let you guys know where we're doing all the parts that get sandwiched in between the frame the first. subframe first. Then we're gonna put the bottom parts. Try not to confuse all that when you're doing it yourself. Yeah, there's a lot of moving parts here, so. Well, just for reference, we did F1 and then we did F4. And then we're gonna do F3 and then F, no, F2, F3. See, it's confusing. Some of us missed math class in high school. Okay, so just to confirm, Thick side, the longer part goes down. Yeah. Okay, that's on. Cool, that's in between there. Now let's do this 19 one and then the 17 that goes up there. F2 will go at the 17 marker. So there's these two. And it looks like the thicker part, no, actually it's the same. It's 15 millimeters each side. And then the 19s are gonna have the thick side going down. Which is this? this stick so which one are we doing first? 19? The 17th first. So it's F2. Okay, so this is gonna just go in either way, right? Yeah, that one is the same on both sides. And that's gonna go in that black section over here. That's great. All the way up there. They made that real easy to get into. Yep. Which way? Inside of it. <laughs> I know, but which way it works easier? From the back or from the front? Yeah, probably from probably from the front over here where I'm standing. See, I got it, I got in the the mechanic way. Yeah, I got into the... Yeah, you're right. This way works way easier. So you get in there, there you go. Come on, you got it. You're almost there. And you missed it, but I got you. It's okay. The thick side goes down, remember. More, more. Right there, there you go. See, so this is a really good example of how it goes in. So you see, it just goes in between there. You got a plenty of goo on it. And then that fills in basically the entire... The entire <laughs> Subtitles <laughs> says anti -C. Not goo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the record, it's anti seize not goo. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's goo, bro. It's brown, gooey. Boom. Done. Professional already. <laughs> Call me for your install. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's gonna be messaging you. Hey, Albert. <laughs> yeah. I finished putting the anti seize on the F1 bolts, and as you can tell, I mean, from what Spoon puts here is. These are 20.5 millimeters, and these are gonna be 19.5 millimeters. So you can kind of see a little bit of a difference. So don't go putting on the wrong ones. So these are fronts, and these are backs. Yeah. Now you know. Make sure you guys know what you're putting in. You can see it from right Okay, on this one, guys, you're gonna wanna put the collar, the bottom end collar, on this plate right here. Before you, before you put your bolt. Because if you put it the other way around, it's not gonna work, okay? And that will sandwich in here. You're good right there. So 
So yeah, everything's basically is on now. We did all of the collars, basically all the main ones, the, the lower control arm, and then this alignment one up here. So basically they're all done. We are just gonna torque the frame now, and then collar kits are on. The next thing we're gonna do is the rear, and then we should be pretty much done. All right, boys, we start off now in the back to do the rear rigid collar setup. You have a total of six rear subframe bolts. You got one here, you got another one right in here, and then you got the third one right there. Now, you wanna make sure that you lower it just like we did the front, not too much, just a little bit so you can get your mitts in there and squeeze the rigid collar right through this area. All right, guys, we're gonna start off with R1 that bolt if you guys can see it fine right here where my finger is at and then this is the bottom as you can see we'll go in here just that like that I think the rear seems to be a lot easier and smoother it's less moving parts in the rear right here kind of comes through here kind of U shapes into this guy and then it's supported by this piece right here so this is like a big fork almost like this is what it looks like okay rigid collar number two is going in let me try to zoom in here where lewis is working on let me see if i can point where it's at see right there is where it's going okay that's the second bolt if i can get this thing to focus for us that's the second bolt. For reference, here's the first one that we put in. And then this will be the last one that we put in. So I guess in the order of operations that Spoon does, they do an, R, an R1, an R R2, and an R3. We've done R1 and R2. Lewis is about to do R3. Okay, now he's gonna go ahead and work on this guy here. This should be Fairly simple, one, two, three. Oh, there you go, look, you guys can see it all done. Let's watch him get under here. Okay, here's the last rigid collar for the rear going in. <laughs> A moment ago, guys, no BS. We lost this guy right here. Let me try and get in here. We lost that guy and literally it had flown and it was like being suspended somewhere down under this corner somewhere like, so ridiculous the way that stupid thing flew out and like we had barely even tapped it you know yeah as you can tell look at the difference in play now just to give you guys a heads up before that thing rattled look there's no play and that thing's loose so now on the way home this car is going to feel super stiff super rigid but again like i'm telling you guys you're going to need for sure 100 percent in alignment because it kind of makes it more true now so it's gonna get everything out of whack and this this is better if you get it aligned trust like i said before the rear is a lot quicker than the front just because it's only six in the front not to mention there's a lot less movement and whatnot with the frame just makes it a lot easier to work on the back we could have done the back front whatever whatever order you want to do but i do recommend and so does lewis is if you're going to do rigid collars you do it for the front and the rear all right guys we're all set with the installs here for the rigid collars we did the front lewis finished up the back we're all set if you guys are interested in getting this done to your fl5 hit us up i do believe we are probably one of the first ones to get this out and do it to our fl5 we have done it to the DE4, and we have done it to most 10th gen platforms and S2000s. So if you are interested in getting a quote, coming in for an install, hit up Lewis right here. He'll get you all set up. Otherwise, we do thank you for watching. Make sure you click that subscribe button for more content. We are coming out hot again for the FL5 and the DE4. And if you've heard, Type S is gonna be coming out hot it's gonna be banging lewis over here has already signed up so if you have not subscribed make sure you guys join us so that way you guys are up to date hit that bell button once again we'll catch you guys out on the track on the next one boys